guys, Shannon Lang here for Flix TV. We're at Centennial Hall in London, Ontario for Shock Doc 2012, Canada's only horror convention. Here with me now are James Falkowski and Jake Grimbrother Ooh. of Vagrancy Films. So guys, what can we expect from this year's Shock Doc? What can we expect? What can't you expect? <laughs> Canada's only self-contained horror convention in its second year of total world domination Burger moving. Who's doing that? We got all the legends. We got them from Costa Rica to Rome. Claudio Simonetti. We got Goblin playing Joanna Angel doing all kinds of stuff that we don't even want to know about. That's going on tomorrow night. We got crazy freaky vendors. We got guys coming in buying posters, creeping out the top door. We got all kinds of stuff going on. It's going to be crazy. Shock stocking. Keeping it real. All right, what are we so doing? guys, this is a three day event, right? A three, a th three, three day event. Okay. So what goes into planning an event of this magnitude? I imagine oh you guys have God. been planning this go. since last year's shock stock. So a lot of trips to divorce court. And how long does it take to organize? Seriously. Jake, when do we start? When did we start? August. We start <laughs> August. No, we started actually. When was the first one ended? Yeah, it started the day after the first one ended. Actually. Yeah, that's what I figured. Yeah. One day afterwards, we said we're never doing this again. The next day, we're like, we're doing this again. <laughs> So what drives you guys to do this? Is it your personal love of horror flicks? Well, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's 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 a it's a statement. We're trying to make a statement. And what is that statement? That you don't mess with us. <laughs> that we own the the exploitation horror scene in Canada, and I don't like to see someone. I actually dare someone to prove us wrong. Come down here and see how the freaks roll in the Forest City. I dare you to try. Nobody does it like Vagrancy and Grim Brothers. Nobody. So what is it this weekend, this year, that you're most excited about at Shockstock oh 2012? Oh, my God. Goblin. Goblin. We got Goblin playing. International superstars. Greatest soundtracks to all horror movies of all time. Dawn of the Dead, Suspiria, Phenomena, Nanasano, everything. They're going to be playing it live. You're never going to hear this. First time in over 20 years these guys have even come to North America, and they're coming to London to play a one-night show on the plane they go. <laughs> Do you guys want to take a walk through with us and show us just how dirty yeah, this we'll event you. I mean, is? If you should have came when on, you know, Saturday, but this is a pretty awesome crowd for, uh, and what, are we closing in an hour or something? Well, right. we'll be back tomorrow, hon. <laughs> so you want to take a walk through and show let's us some of your right. highlights? Let's walk this way. All right, let's kinds of Italian movies together, but they're known for the uh, insanely entertaining demonic movie demons about demons terrorizing the movie theater, and they're going to be in the movie theater tonight watching themselves be terrorized in a the movie theater. I can't get my head even around it. Demons came out, there's actually two, there's Demons 1 and Demons 2. The first one came out in 1985, and yours, Demons right. 2, came out in... 86. 86. Yeah. 86. Wow. So basically we want to say being scary does beautiful things for your complexion. You don't look like you've aged at all. This is you. <laughs> yeah, I, oh my yeah. goodness. You look fantastic. I mean, even though you're done up like a demon, you still, you can tell, you know? Thank you. Thank you. Well, people ask us that all the time. Bobby lives in Italy and I live in Costa Rica and we did the movie in Italy where we both lived at the time. And then we just saw each other as we started the Demons Reunion last year. And people always say to us, wow, you guys haven't changed. And we tell them, yes, that's because we made a pact with the devil. No, not really. Not really. <laughs> what are you currently working on? I just finished a film called Bloody Christmas that was shot in New York. And I have a small part in Rock of Ages. So people were always asking, why is Santa at a horror convention? Then I, I had this moment where all these people wanted their pictures taken, so I thought, how can I melt the two together? 
So I had the vampire teeth from a previous show that I'd done. Right. And I had the black lenses from when I did my comedy stuff as a zombie. So I put it together, created the vampire Santa. And now there's actually two screenplays being developed around that character and a comic book series. Wow. Yeah, so oh, that's amazing. It's kind of fun because this is one of the cases where the character came before the uh, actual movie. So. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Good for you, Sal. Back in 1990, when I was just a little bit of a wee freak, one of the first guys I met in Mississauga, Ontario, the Fangoria Weekend of Horrors, was Kane Hodder. Kane Hodder. Jason from Friday the 13th. Nice to meet you, sir. How are you? <laughs> oh! That's scary. Don't suck me into hell. <laughs> Remember those eyes later when you're trying to oh. sleep. Oh, I won't forget. I won't forget, sir. Is this your first time at Shock Dog? It is. It won't be the last because it's a fun show. Uh, I love the people here and I'm having a great time. What do you think of London, Ontario? Uh, very cool town. Not a big town, but very fun. Everybody I have met here seems like a lot of fun, and I love it. I've been talking to James for a while about trying to do this, and what better day to have me around than today? Yeah, for sure. It's a real Friday the 13th, and I'll probably be killing that guy with the camera. Oh, it is actually Friday the 13th. Uh-oh. Jason's Jason was just attacking our cameraman. I'm sure you get asked this all the time, but I have to ask you, what is your favorite Friday the 13th movie? Okay. What was the what was the one you had the best time working on? Well, I loved all of them, but my favorite one is Part 7, uh, which is the first one I did, and because I think the look of Jason is the best. Okay. The makeup and the, the whole storyline, and had a lot more action for me to do instead of just the victims, because I'm a stuntman for 35 years. Yes, I know. And so it was a very cool part to play where I had to do so many stunts as a character. So that's my favorite, but I loved working on every one of them, just because it was a quick character that I enjoyed. What's one of your um, you know, most treasured memories of playing Jason? Uh, probably working in the middle of Times Square in New York in the full costume and hockey mask on a Friday night at 10 o'clock. We actually shot in Times Square. It was an unbelievable experience because there were hundreds of people watching. And normally, you know, fans don't get to see me in the costume because it's always out in the middle of the woods somewhere. So it was really an amazing experience seeing all those people. How did you get into doing stunt work in Hollywood? I just decided I wanted to do it. I mean, it seemed like a great career, fit my personality well, and just decided I'm going to do this and then starve for eight years trying to get in. Such a dangerous job. It is, but, you know, it's so rewarding and such a fun job. You're never bored going to work, that's for sure. Okay, well, thank you so much, Kane, for talking to us. It was a pleasure, pleasure. to meet you. Thank you. Everyone's on the zombie kick. They're all hot for Walking Dead, but you got to remember the roots came from the greatest zombie movies of all time, the Holy Trilogy, Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, and Day of the Dead. Joe's been in two out of three, and two out of three ain't bad. One of the legends of horror, Joe Palato. I'd like to uh, say hello to my Canadian fans. It's uh, my first venture into Canadian shows, and uh, this city... Uh, London is just an incredible, incredible place. You have an action figure. How cool is that? So well, a, a fan made me that, and unfortunately, I lost his number because I, I want him to start reproducing them. Appearance in Dawn of the Dead, and for the American production, I had this nice scene on the loading dock with the escapees. And it kind of got cut out for time, time's sake, but Dario Argento in his beautiful wisdom in his three box set put that whole scene back in. I made a very groovy, I can't, <laughs> I just said groovy. Made this really neat movie uh, called Effects that was made like in the early 80s and it was so ahead of its time. What did you think of the parody, Shaun of the Dead? Oh, I loved it. Uh, I, 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 actually, I, I, I met the, that team at the premiere of George Romero's Land of the Dead. They actually paid homage uh, to my death scene, and uh, I, they're they're.
just they are unique. They they know their approach to li uh, film and comedy, and uh, I I just had I had a great I had a blast with them and I had a blast with the movie. Thank you so much for talking with us, Joe. It was very nice to meet you. No, 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 no. We have to go Italian. <laughs> Hey guys, we're here at the Shock Stock Horror Convention, day two. Looks like there's a lot of cool stuff going on. I see the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man behind me. So we're gonna take a walk around and uh, see what's going on. We the video. done post-production yeah. and we're gonna be releasing it to uh, festivals nice. so hopefully and more distribution and you were working on the park enforcer when yep. I talked to you last how's, yep. how's that film going park enforcer is completely finished you can actually buy it right here at shock stock we made a VHS copy for uh, all the VHS fans but you get a bootleg DVD with it Emily has got uh, roles I mean she, she actually appears in Dark Knight Rises and uh, Total Recall Emily uh, and uh, Kelly has appeared in a bunch of music videos. She's doing a lot of great work, too. You look like you're having a really good time. I saw a picture of you on Facebook with uh, Kane Hodder, who plays oh. Jason in Friday the 13th, choking you. Yeah, ab absolute <laughs> dream to be choked by Kane Hodder, man. <laughs> enjoying the event so far oh excellent it's great uh, being in our own environment and everything like that with all the other uh, sleaze merchants I guess we would put it we're a midnight madhouse we sell uh, basically anything gore related shirts pillowcases handmade jars and just trying to get a little bit of a different light out here because everything's always black right so we thought white and uh, red blood contrast would be good you know it's a little bit different a little more artsy I suppose What's the most exciting thing you've seen here this weekend? Uh, I'd have to say Kane Hodder. Kane Hodder. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's excellent. He definitely does actually choke you for the pictures. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of scary. I try to not look so ridiculous because he was actually strangling me with the nation of my life. Yeah. If I died then, though, I would have been happy. <laughs> That's fine. Okay, guys, we're here at Shock Stock 2012 talking with Fred the Hammer hey, Williamson. You got that right. <laughs> Why? How did you get the nickname the Hammer? Knocking people out. Knocking people out playing football. I'm glad you clarified that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Fred is an ex pro football player, writer, director, actor, and architect. Well, you know, you have to do all those things when nobody's hiring you, so you have to hire yourself. Well, <laughs> it, it, it increases your longevity if you have control over what you do. Do you mind if we talk a bit about your film career? Go for it. Okay, so your first film role was for um, MASH yep. by the Spirit legendary Trucker. Robert Altman. Spirit Trucker. Uh, so what was it like working with Robert Altman? Well, he was one of the free-spirited directors. He let you do whatever you wanted to do. He came on the set every day with a bucket full of marijuana. I didn't, I didn't do it, but everybody else did it around me. That's Elliot Gould, Donald Sutherland, Tom Skerritt. Sally, Sally Kellerman, they had a great time. So you, you really didn't know if they were sober or, or not when they were doing their lines because Robert Alvin mic'd everybody. Yeah. Everybody had their own mic. So you could talk whenever you wanted to. You could overlap. You could talk when somebody else was talking. They, he didn't really care. That was, that was the genius of Robert Altman. That sounds like a fun way to make a film, actually. If the check clears, it's a fun way, yeah. yeah. In uh, the 1970s, you started Po' Boy Productions, yeah. and you started producing and starring in a lot of the iconic Grindhouse films. I'm impressed. So You've done your homework. I'm impressed. 
<laughs> what was it but, that prompted but, that decision? Yeah, but, hey, what's a groundhouse film? I mean, that stuff that Quentin Tarantino makes, that's groundhouse film? There's no such thing as a groundhouse film. He, he created this terminology. If we made a film that had all those scratches in it and real three was missing, like he flashes up on his screen, they would have walked out of the theater. So I don't have any idea what Quentin Tarantino is talking about, grindhouse film. What the hell is that? Um, I, I get the feeling you know you're not funny? much of a Quentin Tarantino fan. I'm a fan, but people throw terminology out, you know, that we worked hard to get our projects out in the 70s, and then somebody comes along in 2000-something and call our film grindhouse films. You know, what does that mean? Explain it to me. That's like calling my films uh, black exploitation. What, is, what does that mean? I mean, I was happy. I, I was working. The fans were getting happy. I killed white people, black people, pink people, blue people. So why you call my film Black Exploitation? You killed Smurfs? Yeah. Why don't, you know, <laughs> how come they didn't call uh, Clint Eastwood and uh, Burt Reynolds films white exploitation films, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a good point. Same thing. That's a good point. So, well, what would you call those movies then if you had to put a, a label action. to it? Action movies. That's all. Action I'm, an action, I'm an action film star. That's what I do. I fight, kick people's behind, and I ride off in the sunset. Yeah. So what prompted your decision to start making films like that? Because... I've always been a hero. I'm the hero kind of guy, you know? Yeah. I've always been a leader. People always followed me. So if I'm going to be that way in life, then I'm not going to give up that image if I come into the movie career. So I hear a rumor about you doing a sequel to the original Gangsters. Yeah. Any truth to that? Yeah, I start filming next month in Chicago. It stars me, Jim Brown, Pam Greer, Richard Roundtree, Bernie Casey, Antonio Fargus, and Jay Leno. And Jay Leno. I need a white guy to beat up, yeah, so I, you know, we'll go with Jay Leno. You're going to beat up Jay Leno. So I can get on his show afterwards. That's why I put him in the movie. Sweet. I can't yeah. wait to see that. Yeah. <laughs> when you work with sports people like Jim Brown and Bernie Kate, guys who, who respect you, then they listen to what you have to say because it's your, it's your, they know how hard it is to get a project off the ground. And so, you know, they feel for what you're doing and, and they listen. Major movie stars, these guys, they don't care. They don't care what you got to say, you know unless you slam him against the wall. That's how I first met Gary Busey. I heard he was a troublemaker. I hired him on my film. Um, he came on the set the first day. I took him and asked him if I could have a conversation with him. He said, yeah. So I took him around the back. I slammed him against the wall. And I said, I heard you're a troublemaker. And if you give me any trouble, I'm going to kick your butt all over this damn set. And he said, hey, Hammer, you're my man. You're my friend. So he and I made five movies. He's been my friend ever since. What's your favorite Gary Busey movie? Gary is crazy, man. You know, <laughs> Gary is he's crazy good. Yeah, he is. But we know what he does. He intimidates people, and he knows that he does. And if he can get away with it, he is a pain in the tookers. <laughs> so if you don't let him get away with it, then he's a good guy. But he does not take direction from other people. He takes it from me because he knows what I'll do to him. Yeah. And that's how we first got off the ground. Amazing. South. The movie we did was uh, South Beach. South Beach. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for talking to us, sir, and it was a pleasure to meet you. Mine, always. And